Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of the Almighty, most gracious, most merciful, we commence today by speaking on a topic that is of very great relevance, the topic of kinship and relations, relatives. We firstly need to know that we have been created by the Almighty, we have parents, and yes, the parents have relatives, they too have parents, and they have brothers and sisters in most cases. We too have brothers and sisters, later on we get married, we have in-laws, we have so many different people who are connected to us, either through blood or through marriage. And it is very important for us to know what Islam teaches us regarding these people. Firstly, they are people who have been chosen by the Almighty to be connected to us. And this is why we need to firstly respect them completely, and acknowledge them and fulfill their rights because not only are they human beings which we need to definitely fill the rights of all human beings but over and above that they are people who are connected to us and therefore firstly acknowledge acknowledgement is done by recognizing who they are by knowing the relationship between yourself and those who are related to you Sadly, we find the older people know many more relatives than the younger people. Sometimes we are cousins or second order cousins or third order cousins and we don't even know we are related until an older person has to remind us. And sometimes with the death of an older person goes the knowledge of our relations and the generations. So it is important for us as an act of worship to know who our relatives are, to go through the family trees and to check how people are related to us so that we can fulfill their rights. Imagine if Islam has made it so important to fulfill the rights of relatives and we don't even know who they are, how are we going to fulfill the rights of these people? And this is why we say take a moment, spend some time trying to look into how someone is connected to you and whether they are connected to you or not. Ultimately, we are all connected through Adam, the first human being, may peace be upon him. And thereafter, even through the prophet Noah, according to the revelation, when the children and the offspring after him were all from his progeny. So we are definitely connected. But here we are speaking of those slightly closer. It is important that once in a while we visit each other, we share some gifts once in a while, we try our best to solve and resolve matters. We don't allow matters to arise in the first place. We have a good heart. And when we say a good heart here, primarily we're referring to translating the deeds and the actions of a person or their statements in the positive way, even though there may be a negative way of translating them. Sometimes someone gives us a gift and we start thinking, or the devil makes us think, why did they give us a gift? Why is this happening? You know, maybe they want something from me. Maybe they need something from me. Maybe perhaps they are being this and that. Maybe they have ulterior motives. This type of thinking is unacceptable, we should not do that. Someone gives you a gift, you accept it, inshallah, with open arms. And you acknowledge it, if possible, reciprocate it. Because the hadith says, Tahadu tahabu. Give gifts to one another, for indeed it will create the bond, it will further the bond, it will create love between you. So it's important for us to know this as well. So we visit once in a while. Also, importantly, we inquire about their health, and their condition. The health meaning the physical health and the condition meaning sometimes the economic condition, the other problems they may be going through, certain things they may be facing in life. Many a times we have wealth, we, have, uh, we work with people, we try and assist others, but our own relatives are complaining of being poor, of not being able to afford things, of having marital problems without others to help them. Yet within the home there is a counsellor, you know, they normally say, within the home when there is an electrician, that is the home where the bulbs will not be working. I hope that's not the case with us. But sometimes it does happen that a person who is a professional in a certain field has their own family members who are in need of someone in that field and they don't even fulfill the right, they don't even know sometimes. So let us try and look at the needs of our relatives. And this is why when giving out charities, one of the duties upon a person is to look at those who are related to him or her and charity begins at home literally, which means that wealth that we are going to give the poor, we should start with the poor from our family members and try and help them and assist them and let them come onto their own feet and so on. This would be 
fulfilling a double role and double duty. One is that of the charity and secondly that of a person who is related to you. So people who are related to us also, we give them preference in various other matters. They are more deserving of our kindness than others. And this is how we will be able to develop uh, the link between relatives. What is also very important to know and to understand is when we mix with our family, automatically our children may be inclined towards the children of the greater family because we've allowed them to mix. Sometimes you send your child to a university or a school, they come back married or they come back wanting to get married. To whom? Sometimes to people whom we might not really approve of. Well, it was our fault for not having taught them uh, the ropes and for not having constantly reminded them why they are going to the university and ultimately for having chosen a type of school or a type of environment where they would be prone to that type uh, of an ending. Whereas had we mixed with our family members, had we allowed our family members to interact with us, uh, there is a greater possibility that the day marriage comes into play, we might find people who will you know, marry within uh, circles that we we are aware of in no ways are we encouraging marriages inside a small family but we are saying within the extended family within the community and so on if you take a careful look at a lot of communities they are linked somewhere down the line somehow and it only requires a person of knowledge to inform us of how the link is and this is very very important we also need to know that when it comes to relatives, it's not going to be easy sometimes to maintain a relation. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِ إِنَّمَا الْوَاصِلُ الَّذِي مَنْ إِذَا قُطِعَ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلَهَا A person who is a good maintainer of family ties is not the one who reciprocates. You know, they call it a tit-for-tat relation. They give you, you give them. They invite you, you invite them. So much so that I know of people who write a list of how many have invited them to their weddings with the idea that the day I have a wedding in my house, I will invite exactly that list. That's just culture. Really speaking, we don't need to be confined to that list. In fact, we don't really need to invite those who've invited us always. And we don't need to stick only to those. However, the hadith continues to say, the, the true maintainer of family ties is the one who mends, makes an effort to mend a broken relation. So you make the first step, you take the first step, you make the effort and you try your best, you compromise a little bit here and there and you make sure that these people come together, at least they are speaking, at least they are greeting, at least they visit each other once in a while and they are on good terms. You don't need to be in the best of terms because sometimes that might not be possible but at least you don't have a problem and you have a good understanding. Also what is very important is the live and let live policy when it comes to relations and when it comes to greater family. Sometimes you have the term in-laws and I always fail to understand why the word law has to come into this. They call them in-laws perhaps because the lawyers come into play, one wonders why they do this. But at the same time, whether we understand the term or not, we know who we are speaking about. These people sometimes may be slightly different in thinking. We need to live and let live, tolerate. If we can tolerate a business partner or a person who belongs to a totally separate faith with absolutely different norms and understandings because they've walked into our business and they happen to be people who are dealing with us and we're making money through them, we tolerate them, we greet them, we respect them, we overlook everything else. We're just making a bit of money out of them. That's the reason. Don't you think that a relative is more deserving and the in-laws are more deserving of us tolerating, overlooking, ignoring certain things that really don't have anything directly to do with us in order to maintain that link which is going to earn us not just the dollar or the rupee or the rand but the rewards with the Almighty. And we need to understand that the Almighty is watchful, He knows. He is the one who planned that this relative will become your relative or will be your relative from the beginning. And He is just watching us. We all know life is a test. 
and we need to pass this test. So let us also develop this live and let live policy where don't interfere in somebody's life in a negative way. Even if something is positive, you tell them once, you tell them twice, and then it's between them and the maker. And really, if they don't want to take heed, it's one of those things they will have to answer to the maker. But if you destroy the relation completely, there may be some other matters which may arise, which you could have been of benefit regarding. But because you burnt one bridge, no Nobody could cross that bridge thereafter. So let's understand sometimes we need to look at the broader picture and sometimes our daughter can suffer because of our silly behavior with her in-laws and sometimes our son can suffer because of our silly behavior with his in-laws. And this is why we need to come together. No five fingers are the same. If we see the height of these fingers, they're all different. But make a little effort and you find that you can get them all onto one line. Some will have to bend a bit more, whilst others will bend a bit less, whilst the big one remains exactly as is. So with this, we can come all onto one line. And this is the compromise that is sometimes required in order to make the family work and in order to enjoy the fruits of a broader family. The day you are sick, the day you go through calamity, you will realize and understand, I have a lot large party of people who are mine. May the Almighty grant us all goodness. We are all part of a large family as well and we would all love to live a life full of happiness. May we be granted that until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.